What's good with the YouTube? You already know this is a convicts reaction, man. You already know what we do on this platform. We give reaction to a lot of sensitive things out there, whether it be prison, gang streets, and whatnot. YouTube videos, and we talk about it. Anyways, so please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all things to help support this new channel um, and help it grow. So today what we're going to be talking about is this. The soft white underbelly. Recent interview of an ex-gay member named uh, Mohawk, Mohawk Matt. Um, I read a lot of comments. A lot of people were talking about this video and talking about, you know, this was very, uh, you know, positive, inspirational. Um, that he has a positive message. So I said, you know what, man, let me tap into it one time. And so I watch it. And it uh, starts off pretty good. It talks about, you know, how he was adopted out of San Fernando Valley. You know, grew up as a tagger, associated with, his, you know, Southsiders. Um, instantly grew a crack addiction and lost everything within like a year. He was, a, he was an athlete previously. And so, you know, the one thing I noticed from the beginning was he was very honest. Um, for the most part, I think he was honest. I think he was being very direct. I think he has a message to his story. Now, he talked about his addiction, how he lost everything. He talked about how he got clean. Um, talked about his prison time. And the thing that I liked about when he discussed his prison, you know, experience was he was shameful for some of his acts. Some of the things that he did, he was willing to admit that he was wrong. You know, the hate, the gangs, all that type of activity. So he had a message for the youth of what it re really was about. Um, the only thing that I kind of found kind of interesting that I couldn't uh, corroborate and co confirm was he talks about a killing that happened when two skinheads killed this dude and the dude's head came off. I looked all throughout the internet. I could not locate that story. And you would think that a story like that would be on the internet. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that he's lying about his story at all. I'm saying I could not find it. But his message and everything else, man, about, you know, when he was finally done with shooting, shooting the meth and got at his mom and, you know, his relationship, how he ruined that, you know, with his son. Because I've gone through that, man. I have some relationships that with my daughters that I severed that I need to work out on. And it's really difficult, man. Sometimes it may be a little too late. No matter how hard you try, it's difficult. So, you know, in general, man, this dude was very, uh, I liked the video. I thought that it had a positive message that one would want to hear. Um, you know, nowadays he's doing tattoo. He's doing, uh, he mentioned he was doing modeling and stuff. And this dude's all slung back, man. And uh, it just goes to show that, you know, when he got to the part about hitting the rock bottom, right? That's one thing I used to share when I used to do a lot of uh, speaking engagements. You know, I talk about my past addiction issues and I talk about hitting rock bottom met with loneliness and desperation is what got me to where I know I had a problem. I finally, and when I was looking at myself in the mirror, I did not see the person before me. And it was, you know, for me, it was kind of like a, it brought back memories to that moment to where I remember looking at myself in the mirror and not remembering when the last time I seen me for who I really was. I didn't see the person that was in front of me. I seen the person that, you know, I wanted everybody to see, you know, and so I could relate, man. It it's, was really... The interview was really taken, it was conducted really well, man. I, li I like, there's some things about soft white underbelly that I've been really uh, c critical of in the past. You know what I'm saying? Uh, based upon, you know, an email that Rojo got and other things that I've heard from other people. But this interview was really conducted well, man. I think his line of questioning, he guided the, the, the interviewer perfect. And that's the thing I will give him credit for is he runs a good, good setup in how he does these interviews. And the way he pauses and gives them enough time to to answer and then close. Therefore, he can edit the stuff uh, properly. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, if you guys haven't checked it out, check it out. Mo Mohawk Matt, you know. And he talks about being the only white boy basically in a, in a Sudanian neighborhood. You know, I think he was from Sun Valley, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, his story is something that. These type of stories, man, they can be hit and miss. You know, some could have a message that's going to be positive to help others. Some are just glorifying. Some are just fucking uh, victims. But they're playing the victim about their whole life. This dude didn't play a victim not one time. He spoke from the heart. Um, he gave, had a very positive message. And the things that I could tell from him was that he's definitely in the recovery field. As far as he's, in, he's, he's basically in the rooms. Just certain things about the spiritual uh, dynamics of things, man, which makes me be able to relate to what he was saying. You know, I get what he was talking about because it's the same thing that I was taught. And, uh, you know, the growth of a person, you know, can occur 
without you even knowing it. And that's the beautiful thing about those that are struggling with like addiction or alcoholism, right? Is when you start to take this spiritual path and you don't even realize it, you know, there's there's two things, right? Either you slowly work to, towards that spiritual awakening or it suddenly happens, but either it happens and sometimes you don't even realize it happens until you see it in front of you. And you could tell that that was the story behind this man, you know, um, you know, going from being having a scholarship to play uh, baseball to going to private schools and all this stuff to just immediately throwing your life away or temporarily throwing your life away over an addiction that you just try. You know, that must be a trialing experience that sometimes you play the tape out over and over again. Like, why? Why did I throw my why did I throw everything away? You know, I never understood that how people go 20, 24 years, not use drugs, right? And then get hooked and then go out there and just lose everything. You know, I had a cousin that went through that. You know, he was doing good his whole life. Got a, got a, uh, went to the, the military, came out, went to school to be a mechanic. And slowly he started fucking around with that shit. Next thing you know, he's out there in the streets. And he wasn't from the streets. You know, so when I hear this man speaking, I'm thinking about my cousin. You know, similar story, you know, but it just goes to show that addiction doesn't discriminate what side of the tracks you're from. You could have a fucking beautiful fucking, you know, upbringing. Like he had no complaints about his childhood, about how he was treated or anything. He had no excuses for anything. And you can still go down that path just by some choices you make. And I think that's what that his his uh, story to me kind of emphasized the most is it was about a choice, choices he made. Everything that he did was based upon a choice, good or bad. And I think that's the thing that we need to take with us in our lives at times, man, is that everything that we do from a day-to-day -day basis is a choice. You know what I'm saying? You can't blame anybody. The choice is up to you. You can't let no one influence you or push you to make a choice because even if they do that, you're still making the choice to let them do it. You know, and there comes a time, like I said this before, you know, when you're digging yourself in the hole, quit digging. It's as simple as that. Don't make matters worse. A lot of times we like to fucking self-sabotage and just destroy everything that we have going for us and make things worse on ourselves, man. So, um, you know, that's it's kind of a shocking fucking story, man, to be honest with you, because look, hearing him talk, you know, he was never really in the mix of as violence or gangs or nothing. He ran with some tagging crews because it was a big thing. But just that decision to smoke crack just destroyed his life or temporarily destroyed his life his life is good today and i think this goes to show that anybody can redeem themselves and change and and, and be a shining light for others to see, to see as an example of what you can be you know what i'm saying where you can start there's no there's no reason to give yourself an excuse that like look oh i life's been hard or i shouldn't have did this and did that you can't regret what you've already done because you can't change it you can only learn from it and that's what I got from him. Very humble, you know. Um, I hope they bring him on again because there's a lot more to his story you could tell. And he didn't want to go into the prison stuff, which is cool. But it was part of his story. 19 years. Now, you got to remember the first 21 years, he was going to school, college, military, and all that. And he went from having all that to fucking doing some prison time. You know, life takes us down different paths, man. And it's what you decide to do. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad I did this this video reaction because I was hearing about it. And I'm like, man, after I watched the video, I'm like, this is some, a video that people have to tap, tap into, man. You got to watch it, man. And, um, you know, I had, I seen similarities to my story. You know what I'm saying? In my story, you know, like, like anybody else's, is all about the choices I made, man. You know, sometimes we make the best choices, sometimes we don't, man. We got to learn from them or not keep on repeating it. Once you know that choice is not no longer healthy for you, there comes a time when you have to accept it and move forward. You know what I mean? Acceptance is the key to everything in life, man. Honesty and acceptance. Honesty, you got to be real with yourself. Everything that you've done, what you haven't done, where your issues are, and you can't make any excuses for anything. And that's what this video showed me. And acceptance. Acceptance is you can acknowledge the consequences based upon your actions only then can you grow and evolve, right, into being a better person. And you can honestly hear him talk. He's a better person. You know, I, I agree with a lot of his, you know, beliefs. Like not giving homeless people money. Like 
bringing them to, to some place to get some food and stuff like that. Because all they're going to do is turn around and use that money that you work for to feed their addiction. You're not helping them. You're enabling them. And that stuff stuck out to me as well. There's been a couple of times where we've had people come on that had some issues or they see me in a video, check someone. Hey, I don't sugarcoat it. You can't because you're trying to save lives. You know, and this video definitely, man, you know, if the right person watches it, it could save their life. You know, sometimes I like to watch videos and I don't like to look at their appearance because based upon the fact that I'm so prejudgmental, you know, at times, man, I size and everything up that at times I start to have different fixations of, of, of how I view people, you know? So if you, so with this one though, you know, just, just looking at it and listening to it, I could tell that the dude was sincere, man. You know what I'm saying? This was, this was a real one. Good interview, soft white underbelly. One of those channels that I'm up and down about, you know what I'm saying? But this was good. You got to give credit where credit's deserved, man. And uh, shouts out to uh, Mohawk, Mohawk Matt. Excellent video. I hope you do, do more. Hope you continue in your plight to help others because, as you know, helping others helps you. And with that said, it's your boy Flacco, a convict's reaction. I'm gone.